Hey, what's up guys? So we're gonna be talking about a lens today and specifically the lens that has become my go-to lens for photography and vlogging and videography and really just my all around go-to lens. It's been the lens that has been on my camera pretty much constantly and what I've used for almost everything for the past like six months now. And that is the Canon EFS 17 to 55 mm. Canon EFS 17-55 f2.8 and uh, first of all this is a Canon lens and this is a crop censored lens so this isn't going to work on a full frame body and it's also not going to work you know unless you're using Canon lenses. Another thing you might notice is the focal length is very similar to a lot of kit lenses. If you buy a crop censored camera usually the kit lens the focal length is going to be somewhere around 18 to 55 millimeters something like that this is 17 to 55 millimeters so just a hair wider than some kit lenses but the big difference between this and well there's a few difference but the main like thing that's going to catch your attention difference between this and most kit lenses is most kit lenses are gonna have uh, an aperture that goes somewhere between 3.5 at the wide end and 5.6 or maybe even worse at the long end of the lens. That means that if you're at 18 millimeters or whatever the widest uh, focal length on your camera lens is, the widest you can open your aperture up is 3.5. But if you zoom in all the way, the widest you can open your lens aperture is 5.6. That's not very wide. It's not letting in a whole lot of light. And it's also not gonna give you a very shallow depth of field. This lens has a constant aperture of 2.8. That means all the way through the zoom range, you can have the aperture open up to 2.8 if you wanna open it all the way. And that's really useful um, it's a much more professional feeling and, and uh, professional quality lens. Um, you can get at any part of the focal range on this lens, you can get a much more shallow depth of field. You're getting a whole lot more light in, especially at the long end of the lens. And it's just giving you a lot more options to work with. So most kit lenses are gonna have this at this point as well but this lens does have image stabilization, which means for photos, it's going to help you to have your subject more sharp and less blurry when you uh, maybe have to bring down the shutter speed a little bit slower. And it's also useful in video to take out a lot of those little micro jitters. So I've been using this as my main lens. It's been the lens that's been on my camera 90, maybe more percent of the time for the past six months because I've been using it for vlogging, I've been using it for videos, I've been using it for still photography, I've really been using it for everything. The zoom range, the, the focal length range that it has is a very useful range. Pretty close to the equivalent of a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, except it's actually a little bit better on the telephoto end. It goes to 55, which on a full frame equivalent would be closer to 90. On the wide end, it goes to 17, which on a full frame equivalent would be like 27 point something. So not quite as wide as your 24 to 70 full frame zoom lens, but pretty close and you have more reach on the telephoto end. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the full frame equivalents, don't worry about it. A few things I'll point out with this. For vlogging and for video, the autofocus on this is pretty loud. So when you have the mic on the camera, directly above the lens, you do sometimes pick up a little bit of autofocus noise. Most of the time for me, it's not bad enough to worry about, to think that I need to switch lenses or anything like that. It's been, it's been fine. Um, I, I wouldn't call it distractingly loud. It is there. If you look for it, you can hear it. If sometimes in quiet moments, you can hear it. But for the most part, for me, for my purposes, it's fine. And I'll show you guys what it sounds like when it's focusing.
Another thing about this lens is it's pretty big and pretty heavy. So if your vlogging setup is focused more on being small, compact, portable, this probably is not the lens for you. For me, that hasn't really been the case since I've gotten into vlogging and trying to build the right vlogging setup for me. Um, I've been much more focused on um, getting the best image quality that I can out of my equipment on my budget, obviously. And this fits into that really well. It is heavy. Also for vlogging, it only goes to 17 on the wide end, which is just a little bit wider than your kit lens, for instance, if you've ever vlogged with a kit lens. So if you found yourself vlogging with a kit lens and feeling that you needed to go much wider, this probably isn't gonna be good for you either. For me, I've never been a fan of the super overly wide vlogging angle. Um, it certainly makes it easier because you have to worry less about whether you're actually in the frame. Um, but it also distorts the face a lot and everything else in the frame a lot. And I have a flip out screen so I can see if I'm in the frame or not. So I'm not super worried about that as much. And I just don't like the aesthetic of the super like fish angle wide type of vlogging. Now for photography, this is a beast of a lens. And I mean, the zoom range that you have with this is, you know, really almost everything that you need for most situations. That's why it's been sitting on my camera constantly these last six months. Uh, 2.8 aperture is really wide open for a zoom lens, especially a zoom lens that has this kind of range makes it really nice for images. I've been using it for pretty much almost all the images that I've taken in the past six months. I will say at least 80% of the images that I've taken in the last six months. It's not as wide of an aperture as for instance, if you had a prime lens, a lot of times like this 50 millimeter prime lens that I have is 1.8. And when I got this lens, I was expecting that, you know, I would have to switch it out every now and then for those shots where I wanted an even blurrier background, shallower depth of field, or uh, you know was in a darker environment and didn't want to use a flash. But I'll have to say, as much as I like the 50 millimeter 1.8 that I that I'm using right here, that is a prime lens. I found that I have not been using it anywhere near as much lately because the focal length of 50 millimeters I can already get in this lens, and yes, 1.8 is noticeably wider of an aperture than 2.8. It's more than a whole stop, like one in, it's more than a whole stop. So that's a lot more light that you're getting in. It is a much shallower, like noticeably shallower depth of field, but this has already a nice shallow depth of field. It depends on what you're shooting, what kind of feel you wanna get. Sometimes you may need to go wider and then if you have you know, a prime lens like the 50 millimeter, you can put that on and get that wider aperture. But for me, in most situations, I've been perfectly happy with the 2.8 aperture on this. So to sum it all up, who is this lens for? What are its strengths? What are its weaknesses? So again, very versatile lens. As far as who's it for, if you're using a crop censored Canon body, it's probably for you. Event photographers, wedding photographers, most photographers are going to be able to utilize this focal length, uh, this range of focal length. And with the 2.8 aperture on a zoom lens, that's really the best you're gonna get unless you step up to like the Canon RF lens full frame for the EOS R system with a two aperture that thing's like $3,000 or something, maybe more. This is a little more affordable. Strengths, again, the focal length, the zoom range, and that wide aperture of 2.8. You can get nice blurry backgrounds and also does fairly well in low light because of having that wide aperture. Its weaknesses, it's a little slow to focus and also loud to focus. Uh, for photography, in most instances, it's not a problem. If you're a sports photographer, 
First of all, you might want something a little longer, a little more telephoto. Uh, also, the autofocus speed, if you're doing fast moving sports or something, that uh, might not be the best. But for most situations with photography, portraits, events, those kind of things, landscape certainly, um, it's fast enough and it's not loud enough to be obnoxious in those kind of situations. Even if you were in a like quiet church wedding or something, I don't think the autofocus on this would be loud enough to be obnoxious. In video, the autofocus might be a little loud. Again, if you have the mic directly on the camera, right above where the lens would be, that could be a problem depending on what you're filming. Again, for vlogging, I don't find it to be loud enough to be a problem. For filming something that you're going to give to a client, if you're filming with the microphone directly on top of the camera and you're going to use that audio from the microphone, it, you might run into problems with that sometimes. As far as vlogging, weaknesses, what I see is it's not the widest. For me, it's wide enough and it is heavy. If you don't want a heavy vlogging setup, look somewhere else. Go for the 10 to 18 or something like that. Anytime you are trying to go to a smaller, lighter setup, you're going to be trading that off for some other things. For instance, the 10 to 18 has really slow aperture, uh, which is one of the main reasons I was looking for something to replace it. I still have the 10 to 18, but I almost never use it anymore. Um, and image quality. As far as image quality with this goes, I will say if you are a photographer, you need to be taking your images that you take with this into Lightroom to at least, at the very least, apply the lens corrections. This does have distortion for most of the zoom length. There's some kind of distortion at varying levels throughout almost all of the zoom range of this lens. It's easily fixable in Lightroom. You just click the one button, lens correction, it's gone. But if you're not taking it into Lightroom, that's something to definitely be aware of. The strengths of this lens, image quality, like I said, really good. Keeping in mind the few things about taking it into Lightroom. The price on this has actually also become a strength recently. When I got this lens, knew it was going for like 800 or something, I think. And recently the price has dropped down to 500, 550, somewhere around there. Um, I'll put links to this in the description below if you want to check that out. For this level of quality of lens in this zoom range, that price, that's a really good deal. Now, that is not cheap, okay? I understand that. This is a lens that you're getting to step up the quality, to step up what you're able to do with photography, videography, etc. If you're looking for your first lens, as always, I will suggest the 50 millimeter 1.8, especially for photographers. That's the best bang for your buck that you're gonna get. When you're wanting to step up to a better lens, that's where you can look at something like this. And for $550 brand new, that's really a great deal for the quality that you're getting out of this. A strength-ish, I'll say, it does have image stabilization, it's not the best image stabilization. This is an older lens and it'll definitely be enough for being able to turn your shutter speed down a little lower in photography if you need to. It'll take out micro jitters a little bit when you're filming handheld, but it's not gonna be like putting it on a gimbal. It's not that level of image stabilization at all. But all in all, like I said, I really have been enjoying this lens if you are looking to upgrade to something more professional for a crop sensor body, then I would definitely suggest looking into this if you have the budget for it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped if you were thinking about this lens or thinking about a lens to upgrade to. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, what you think about the lens, what you thought about this video. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon so you can get notified of all the new videos I make here on this channel. Thanks guys.